Hello and welcome to WeekNet Academy. I am your host and instructor, Douglas Bordeaux. The goal of this very first video is to get you up and running with Daemon Linux in a virtualized environment in any host operating system, well, really just Windows or Linux. You can get this working in virtualization in Mac OS, but I believe you have to pay for a piece of software called VMware Fusion. So, to start off, we're going to need two things from the internet. We're going to need a copy of VMware Workstation Player, which is free. You could just simply search Google for a VMware and Workstation Player download free or something like that. And click on the link to get to their actual official site and ensure that you are going to VMware. I'll also place a link in the description of this video, but I'm not sure for how long it's going to be valid, since people tend to change their websites every now and then. So if you scroll down, you'll see two buttons, one for Windows and one for Linux. I hit the download one for Windows and I already downloaded VMware Workstation and installed it. And it gives me this little icon here. I'm going to move this over here. And the next thing we're going to need is Daemon Linux itself, which comes in a pretty little package, which is an ISO file. And if we go over to download here, we can see that this link right here, 2.2 gigabytes, gives us the latest version, which is 2.2. This means that I'm in my second year of developing Daemon Linux, and the two after that means the month, basically. So it's February. So it's version 2, February. You can also download this MD5 sum file here just to ensure that all the bits and bytes made it onto your hard drive properly, but I'm not going to be showing you that because I technically don't know how to do that in Windows right now. But if you're using Linux as a host operating system and you want to use the MD5 sum, you could just simply use the MD5 sum command against the ISO file here, and then just ensure that this value right here, that's within this ISO file, or MD5 file rather, matches what is spit out from the MD5 sum command. So when you first start VMware Workstation Player for the very first time, you won't see these listings here in the library. This is my own personal library. Uh, to start and create a new virtual machine, you could just hit this here, or I believe you could go to Player and New Virtual Machine. So in this very first window here, I'm going to go to Installer Disk Image, and then I'm going to browse to the downloaded Daemon Linux ISO file. I'm going to hit Next, and then we'll just choose Linux Debian 10, 64-bit, because I did build this from Debian. And I'm going to call this something so it shows up in my library over here under a name that I can remember. Daemon version 2.2. Again, this is up to you. The maximum hard disk drive space is completely up to you. I recommend at least 50 gigabytes in case you want to install lots of tools or add a lot of packages or something like that or use it as your primary OS even though it's virtualized. You can, have, you can always make this bigger or smaller, you just have to change it in the operating system itself. And I always choose store virtual disk as a single file, it just makes things a little bit easier whenever I go to transfer this or copy it. Again, this is virtualized, so this hard disk space won't actually take up 50 gigabytes of your hard disk space until it's actually full inside the virtualized environment. So typically you'll see maybe like 8 or 9 gigs already being used uh, whenever we go through the installation process itself onto your host operating system, that is. So I'm going to hit Next. And then in Customize Hardware, I'm going to add as much RAM as I can. I usually do about 6 gigs of RAM. And you need at least two processors because this is a 64-bit uh, version kernel that I put into the ISO file itself. And then I'm going to go to USB and I'm going to make this 3.0 because I do have USB 3.0 on my computer and I have 3.0 um, network adapters. So I'm going to hit close after this. I know it's kind of counterintuitive to not hit a save button, but as you can see, those changes were made here. So finally, I'm going to hit finish. And then we're going to start our virtual machine for the very first time. And you could do that by hitting the play button while it's selected here in the library, or you could just double click it. Now this is going to point to a grub boot menu. And if you just simply hit enter here on this screen, you'll see that the uh, Daemon Linux operating system will in fact boot. And you'll be presented with the uh, desktop manager login screen. The credentials for this are listed on the Daemon Linux website. The default root password is weaknet, without quotes, obviously. So we're going to type root, and then weaknet. Hit enter, and you'll be logged right into the actual desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is just simply run the installer. We can hit the Windows key and type installer. 
and then hit this right here. You can hit enter twice or double click it with the mouse as I did. Okay, so once this is done, we're just going to simply hit yes, and then hit OK. And then we're going to choose the only hard disk that's available. This is the one that I created in VMware that we just created. And it was 50 gigabytes in size. I'm going to hit OK. OK, so this is a disk partition manager. And it's called Gparted. And it's the one I just decided to choose for the installer application. And what the first thing we need to do is create a partition table. Because technically, the disk is completely unallocated and completely empty. MS-DOS is perfectly fine. I'm going to hit Apply. And then I'm going to hit the insert key and I'm going to create my first partition. This partition is going to contain all of the files that I want to be persistent in the, within the operating system. So I'm going to do 50, 2, 3, and I'm going to keep this at ext4. I'm just going to call this label as root forward slash, hit add. And then in this extra space here, this is going to be volatile space. It's going to be added into the address space. But since I handed it 6 gigabytes in size for RAM, I don't think it's actually technically going to be used. There sh really shouldn't be any thrashing going on with 6 gigabytes unless somebody has a really bad memory leak in their application or something. So it's kind of an old-fashioned idea to use part of the disk operating system when people couldn't afford RAM. So we're just going to go with the flow. Um, again, I'm going with this selected, I'm going to hit the Insert key. And then I'm just going to change this to... Linux swap. I don't have to put a label. I can hit add. And then I'm going to hit the check mark here to ensure that all of these changes are in fact written to our virtual disk. Click apply. And then I know again this is kind of counterintuitive, but we're going to hit close and then we're just going to exit the application so the ins installation tool that I wrote can just continue. So for this, we're going to use the swap partition that we created. And then for this, we're going to use the actual hard disk to install everything, too. The first one's a lot smaller. As you can see, this one is about 50 gigs still in size. So I'm going to choose ext4, and I'm going to call my host daemon v2. You can call this. This is your, going to be your host name for your installed system. You can call this anything that you wish within reason. There is a set of characters. Maybe I should update the installer tool to say that. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to choose my kernel. I usually uh, choose like the latest uh, AMD64 kernel. So there's one here, dash 8. I'm actually going to just choose dash 6, because I've used that before, and I know that's a stable one. This is completely up to you and your system. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to hit Yes here for the clock. And then I'm going to scroll down until I get to my actual time zone here. which is, come on, America, New York. And then this screen right here, this is a new thing I added into the installer. This just basically allows you to confirm that all of these are correct. The operating system, obviously, the time zone, the file system, the partition itself for the root, and then the kernel that I chose and the host name that I chose. Then I'm just going to hit yes and then allow this to install. This may take a while because, as you can see, it's it's going to take about almost 8 gigabytes in size from the squash FS, which means that the live file system that I made for the live version, the version that we're running right now, that's not installed onto a hard disk, is going to be extrapolated and copied onto our virtual hard disk. And then we install the kernel onto that hard disk and then the boot manager, as you'll see later here. And actually, it's all done automatically, so you, you won't have to do anything else after that. But again, because it's seven, eight, about 8 gigabytes being pulled out of the SquashFS onto the hard drive, it usually takes a while. And I employed rsync to do this, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. All of the code for this ins installer script right here is on my GitHub page. Okay, so you can see that this is now automatically installing Grub2 in the kernel on my new system. This Again, this is just going to be installing it on the VM disk, not in the host operating system. This is not going to touch your Windows or Linux installation that is your host. And the copying of the files process took about four minutes, in case you were wondering. OK, so it looks like it's all complete. Would you like to reboot now and test it out? This is just like any other Linux installer. We're just going to hit yes here. And then it says thank you. And the system will automatically reboot. And when it boots back up, you will now be in your fresh installation. You can see already that the boot screen is different. It's not a black screen with white letters. You can hit enter, or it'll automatically just choose your kernel. All right, so again, to log in, root, and the password is weaknet. 
Okay, so the first thing I'd like to note is that VMware Tools is installed by default. And what VMware Tools allows you to do is share a clipboard and change your screen resolution and a whole slew of other options and functionality comes along with it. Uh, but those are the two that I primarily focus on. And why this is good is that, for instance, say you're doing a penetration test for a company and you're using virtualization for all of your hacking and all of your hacking tools, and then you're using your host operating system for reporting. So say I'm using Linux right here as the pen test. I could do just do something like this, for instance. I can share the clipboard between the guest operating system and the host. So I'm going to hit copy, and then I'm going to go to my host operating system, open up Notepad, and I'm going to right-click and go to Paste, and you can see that the clipboard was, in fact, changed. Also, changing your desktop resolution is as easy as just changing the window size. Look how nice that is. There. So, the first step in a fresh installation of Daemon Linux is to obviously change your root password. You don't want to have your root password as weaknet, because that's a very weak password. So to change the root password, we type P-A-S-S-W-D, and then we just simply type our new password. So just to give you a quick tour of the user interface itself, the desktop manager is LightDM. The window manager that you see here is XFCE4. And we can get to the menu just by clicking this up here, and you can get to all of the cybersecurity tools here that I have pre-installed. If you'd like to add more, you can click on the Daemon App Store. There's also an update tool here. If you run this update tool, it'll make small updates to the operating system itself. And that gets pulled down from my GitHub page again so that every single time you run it, you will get the latest updates and changes and configuration changes. Also, there's a custom menu bar down here in which we can add new items to. So for instance, say we want to have header cap added there. You can grab it out of this menu and then drag it down here and, and move it around till you see the red bar. As you see here, just let it go and then click create launcher. Now we could just simply click this as if it were like part of Windows taskbar here. Another quick shortcut you can use as we saw before is that you can hit the Windows key and just simply start typing the name of an application, hit enter and enter again, and you can quickly open it that way as well. To add an application to the quick taskbar up here next to the menu, again, you just simply have to click it from here and then hold on to it and drag it up here until you see a little red bar, let it go, click Create Launcher, and then it's added to the quick task menu up here. So that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, feel free to throw them down into the comments, or you can email me directly, wignetlabs at gmail.com, and I will try to uh, get back to you as soon as possible. I do have a day job. And anyways, if you like the video, please click the like button. If you uh, want to see more, just simply click subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this WeekNet Academy video. Signing off, Douglas Bordeaux.